Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. As always, I am Dor and today we are going to be starting off by messing around with Batania just a little bit here because we need a couple things to get ourselves squared away so that we can craft the Terra Shatterer here shortly. But before we can craft the Terra Shatterer, we need to get the Alfheim portal up and running. So we're going to need the mana pools, we're going to need the mana diamonds so we can craft a thing of Terra Steel. We need one ingot right now. Let me grab the rest of the stuff out of here, and then we can throw this down and generate one of the terrestrial ingots. We might need mana, though, because I didn't move everything, so we'll see here in a second. Is that all the stuff we need? Yeah, let's see if we can turn one of these into a mana diamond, at least. Yes, we can. Cool. I don't think we have enough mana. I didn't grab my stick thing, dang it. We might have just enough mana in the pools right now to turn this thing into a, a Terra Steel ingot. So let me throw all of these down. If we do, great. If not, then I have to throw some coal down real quick to get the rest of it done. All right, cool. There we go. So there's our one Terra Steel ingot. We need to break that down into nuggets because we're going to need those for the mana pylons here. Or actually these ones, the nature pylons, not the mana pylons. My bad. We need two of those and we're also going to need one of these things here so that's where all nine of the little nuggets are going to be going here so we're also going to need two more mana diamonds for the mana pylon so let me go grab some more diamonds i didn't realize that while i was getting my stuff together yeah i didn't bring them down here okay let me go grab those real quick all right so before we actually make any more of the mana stuff i want to make a couple of the overgrowth seeds because right now we only have three of our endo flames per spreader so with these things on the flowers it'll actually double the output of the flowers so we are going to need 14 of them them, so that should be 28, right? That should be good. We're also going to need 28 of these ones as well. So there's 16. Let me get another couple from there. Never mind. That was only enough for seven of these, but we can at least place these down on a few of these and then I can fill those ones up with coal and go grab some more Laramar and Beniatite to make the rest of these that we're going to need. So let's do these ones. Let's try and do them in chunks of three at least to try and keep everything in order here. So let's do that there and there. And then the ones that were already overgrown, those are all the overgrown things that we've come across from either in vaults or just out in the world that we found in chest. So we didn't have any more Beniatite, so I had to go grab some of the ore, but here's eight of the ore pieces. Let's see if we get the 28 that we need from this. That would be great. And we got 25. Okay, I'll go grab one more ore piece, and that should be more than enough then. All right, that was quite the brain fart there. That was my bad, but let's try and do this correctly now. We need at least 80 of the Beniatite. We have all the Laramar we need. So I have 25 of the ore pieces here to hopefully give us 80. If it gives us anything more, that's great. If not, then it is what it is. Let's break that down, and let's see. We got a little bit over a stack. That's probably still not enough. All right. Never mind. I should have counted it before I said that was not enough, but that's exactly enough that we needed, or that's actually the exact amount that we needed. So there we go. That's going to be enough to make the last five that we need. Ignore this thing. We keep getting charcoal on the on the altar, so I, I set up a little smelter to, to smelt down a bunch of wood, basically. All right, so let's place all of these things down. As far as I can tell, we can't get these back, so I'd rather not have to move our mana setup ever again, because that's a pretty pricely little uh, investment there, putting those things in. But now I'm just going to run through, place down the coal that we have, and we should have a bunch of mana being generated. That flower there should be disabling our magnet, but it wasn't a second ago, so I'm not sure if that's because we didn't have mana in our thing. Which, nope, it's still just pulling it out of there, even though the thingy's there. Maybe it's out of range, I guess, if I had a, have a, had a guess there. Also, before I forget to mention it, the layout that we have now with all of our mana stuff, this is basically the same way Chosen Architect has his little mana setup going as well. Uh, he had six flowers per mana spreader. I just went ahead and did the overgrowth thingy for just three of them to try and get away with it like that. And I also don't have the mod that he has unlocked that allows him to feed the charcoal and coal to the uh, plants a different way. I think he has like relays or something. I don't have that yet, so I'm using the normal little drop crate still. I just have it set up a different way to drop things in there. But we have mana coming out the wazoo right now, so that's great. Let's get both of these things turned into mana diamonds. That should allow us to make two of these things, which I need my gold and mana steel. So that should be right over here. Let me grab that. My gold's already in my inventory. Let's do that. We need two of you. And then with those, we then turn them into this. But we need... Uh, do we have this stuff? What does the ore look like? We should actually have some of that in our box. I remember grabbing some of that way, way back 
when we went to the end. There we go. We got 18 of that in our box. Let's fortune all 18 of this down. I don't know if I'm going to need it for anything else, so we might as well just do it all in one go here. Let's go with that. And we got a stack and five. Okay, cool. All right, so with that stuff in our inventory, we can now craft the Ender Watchers, which actually now thinking of it, I probably didn't need to craft that because I'm pretty sure we have one or two of those already in our boxes because I've grabbed them from vaults before. So that might have just been a bit of a wasteful craft, but I don't think it's that bad of a craft to do. So let's get these. Those are the two nature pylons that we need. And then we're also going to need this thing. So let's grab six of the living wood. If I could do that correctly, there we go. And let's plop this guy into there. And now with these two items, those are the two main things that we need. Everything else is going to be living wood. And we're also going to need a couple of these things, the glimmering living wood as well. So that's just vault dust and a living wood combined. And all we need is three of those. The rest of it is just gonna be plain old living wood. So we have all of our vault dust upstairs in our vault room and there we go with that and now we need to grab our book because I don't remember the crafting recipe or the actual design of the portal that we need to do. All right, so using the book, this is the portal that we need to craft. And I didn't realize it, but we only need the pylons over a mana pool within an 11 by 11 by 11 radius. So we could, I think, take out two of our sparks from the pools right here and not have to place down new ones. So let's take that one and this one. We'll see, we're still quite a ways out from having the mana required to turn this thing on, but we should be able to do this and that. And now those should automatically connect to the gateway core as long as we build it close enough to the thing. So from this nature pylon over to the core, we are 10 blocks away. So hopefully this works. All we need to do is something like that. And then we are going to space it out like so. Do we even have the height for this? I don't know if we do. Uh, and then on the book, we have the glimmering stuff in the middle of all three of these sections. Okay, so that should work. And that should work. Let's do one of those, one of those. That, that, and that should be the trick. Now, we can't turn this on just yet because, again, we don't have the mana to actually even kickstart this thing just to see if it even works. So let me AFK for a little bit and throw a bunch of coal into the hoppers and let it run for a little while as well till we are full up on the mana here. All right, so we're still not quite where we need to be with the mana to activate the portal just yet, but I did rearrange the coal dispensers real quick because with the monocle on our face, the mana seer monocle, it shows us the radius of the endo flames pickup. So on both sides here, the the, the, the layout's the same, so this guy hits the pressure plate just barely. That's the last little block in its radius. And it's seven of the endo flames connecting into it, and then the other seven on the backside connect into this one. So we only had to have three of the coal dispensers down instead of the seven or eight of them that I had down previously. So now that kind of makes it easier for me to refill the coal a little bit quicker instead of going through each of the dispensers over and over again. But while we wait for the mana to meet the limit for that thing to activate, I'm going to make a couple of the pasture seeds because I want to actually change the grass in our area. I didn't know this was even a thing. And this is also another thing that I picked up from Chosen Architect's video. But I also realized that this thing does have a radius and it's not in range of the coal dispensers. So it's like the flowers are in range, but the coal isn't. So as long as I stand within the range of this, then we don't pick up the thing. So we're going to need more of these around here if I don't want to be picking up the coal over and over again. So that's probably what's going to happen. I'll craft a few more of those. I don't think they take mana. I could be wrong about that, but I don't I don't think they do. So I'll make a few more of them, maybe not the floating variants, and just hang them around the, the corners here so that we're not grabbing the coal over and over again. And with the pasture seeds here, there's multiple recipes to change the color of the grass here. So honestly, anything other than this color would be great. So I don't know what the, the normal standard pasture seed's going to change it to. It's not going to change it to anything. Never mind. That's not a, not a grass option. So that means we only have six options to change the grass color. I'm going to craft one of each of these real quick because the recipes are are fairly straightforward and they're not really complicated so let me grab the stuff to make one of each and then we can kind of settle on which grass type we want to go with well let's see which one of these we like the most so this is the dried variant and it's actually not this color it's a little greener that's not too bad I don't I don't dislike it as much as I dislike the vanilla stuff here next up let's try the golden one and I don't really like that one that's that's a little too much like sand Although I guess it would kind of fit the base, right? Since we're in the middle of a desert. That's not awful either, I guess. It just it kind of looks like like 
puke almost, right? I mean, it looks looks kind of gross. Let's try the Vivid one next. So this one's kind of nice. It's a little, little too green, though. A little bit too green. So that's that's what we got there. Let's try the Scorched one next, right? Yeah, Scorched one here. That's just going to make the ground red. That's not awful. Not hating that one. Let's see what the next one is. It is infused. Okay, so this is going to be something blue. It is indeed. That's not awful either. I kind of do like that. And last up here, we got the mutated one. So that's just going to be purple and yellow flowers on it. All right. Not this one for sure. That's not going to happen. So it's either between this one, which might not really work since we have blue walls. Having a blue floor as well might be a little... A little much there. The red, although we have cherry wood on the uh, the trim of this place, it's not red. It's the black bark of it, not the uh, the red bit of the tree. So we're probably going to go with either... No, definitely not that. We're probably going to go with the dry one, honestly, because it's not too green and it's not too vanilla paley like the, the vanilla grass here is. The golden one, I really don't like the look of it. It just looks like pizza sauce or, or vomit or something it looks really gross to me i don't know what it is but this one this one's too green that one's red i don't want red ground the blue is going to kind of clash with that stuff and the purple i don't really think that's going to fit into this area honestly we're not going to have too much stuff down here we're not going to spend too much time down here but i'd rather not have purple floors so i'm going to craft up a bunch of the the dry stuff here that's not too expensive to make we need dead bushes and the pasture seeds and we can get dead bushes, I think, through the mana stuff. Oh, no. Okay, we need one of those. That's that's not something we have yet. But we are in the desert, so there is a bunch of these things around, and I have a few of them built up, so we should be good. I'm going to layer the ground here with a bunch of that stuff and change out the color here. You know what? We can actually silk touch this stuff, and it keeps the color of the block. I thought it would break it like it does with the overgrown stuff, but it actually lets you keep that color of the grass. So what if I don't actually set it to all that color, but I make a few patches of this, farm up a bit of the color from them, and then we maybe do some sort of like design or something down here? Here, instead of having it all one solid color that might look a little bit better okay well the pools are just about full they're just a little bit off from being completely full so i don't think that's going to matter if it's missing that little bit of mana i really hope it's not going to matter but we are going to activate this portal and hopefully it actually works we only as far as i'm aware we only need one item from this thing it didn't turn on why did it not turn on it didn't drain the mana from these guys. Do I need them closer? Kickstart it again, maybe? And new. No. Okay, I'm just going to wait until the mana pools are completely full, and then I'll try it again. If it still doesn't work, then we need to move the nature pylons closer to the thing, and then refill mana pools to try and turn it on again, which is going to be really annoying but hopefully it works once these are completely full but while we wait for that to happen let's go make our omega statues so we should have all of the stuff squared away we have all of the dead statues in the chest here so if i done my math correctly we only need 30 of the normal little gifter statues so we don't have anything in here right now let me do that so we can see we don't have anything in there right now. Off of all of the little statues here, we should get up to 90%. And we did indeed off of those 30 statues. So then we just throw in two of the bigger ones here, and that's the 10% we needed. And there is another Omega statue. So let's plop this downstairs real quick. I need to grab a chest. Oh, let me... Oh, hey, there, there we go. Let's, uh, let's grab one of these guys for right now. I don't really mind. And hopefully it's something good here. So we got glass, we got obsidian, we got SpaceX 12, iron plates, and slate. I am going to go with obsidian because that's going to be a little more annoying to get than glass is. We have a bunch of villagers. I can get a ton of glass really quickly. I'm not too worried about that. The obsidian, on the other hand, is going to be more annoying, I feel. So let's go with that one. I'm going to leave this alone for a little bit to generate. Let's check on our mana pools. Hopefully we are full. Uh, we are full on both of those. Okay, cool. So let's try this again. And it still didn't turn on. Okay, that's not a good sign. I just wasted so much time letting those things fill up over there. That stinks. I'm going to scoot this over two blocks. 
and see if then it turns on. Hopefully this works now. I only scooted it one to be a little bit closer to the pylons and it's still not kicking on. Okay, am I supposed to link this somehow to the pylons or is it supposed to be a clear line of sight? Probably is what's happening here because all the chests despawn in front of us there or maybe we just can't see them through the portal. Yeah, we just can't see them through the portal. Okay. Huh. All right, so this should work now. If it doesn't, then I don't know what I need to do, but we needed to move the pillars one outside the portal frame. Apparently, that's a thing you're supposed to do because it doesn't tell you that in the book. So whether or not that is the case, we will see. So let's right click on that. The pools are full and it's actually doing something this time. Is it on? Is it going to stay on? We are draining mana and that's all it used. It only, oh man, come on. I waited that long for all that stuff and I could have figured out it didn't work sooner. Wow. Okay, all we need from this right now is these two items. So we need to drop those into the portal and drop those into the portal. We get two of those items back, which are Dreamwood. With the Dreamwood, we turn those into sticks and, or a stick, and then we need that for the Terra Shatterer. So we don't currently have the mana diamonds to make the Terra Shatterer. We are, I think we have three. 31 or 32 vault diamonds so we are just short of it we need another eight or so diamonds and we can craft this thing but now that we have all of this stuff in motion what is this thing Shay? okay never mind that's not something we want but now that we have that up and running i don't think we need anything else from that so that was pretty pointless i kind of wish it would have worked from this thing because now I, I i really don't know if we need anything else from that but now that we did it we should have unlocked some more stuff in the portal book here, or in the uh, Batania book, but we didn't. Oh, you know what? We have to throw the book into the portal as well. So let's do that. We're going to get a book right back. We're going to get a... There we go. Dang it. Uh, but now we should have more recipes and stuff in here. We do indeed. We can summon the Gaia Guardian, which I imagine is going to be a pain in the butt in this pack because <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to get smoked by that thing. We can now craft the augments for the sparks, which I think will then allow us to transfer mana from pool to pool with the spark instead of having to do what we did here with setting up a whole nother little thing of mana generation for the, the portal itself, which would be really helpful if that's the case. I'm honestly not too familiar with anything past the Gaia Guardian or even this bit of the mod itself because I don't usually go that deep with it. I make the flying armor which is disabled in this pack in the uh, Sky Factory mods and then that's usually about as far into the mod as I go. So as far as anything else to make, I'm not too sure, but we are going to start saving up to get our hands on the Terra Shatterer here. This thing as well is apparently decent at generating mana for us as well. What is this used to generate mana? Okay, I'm going to have to look up a guide potentially on this one because it sounds simple, but also confusing at the same time. So it plays a mini game by itself in a 25 by 25 square centered on the flower. And the floor needs to be made out of these blocks. And it's just something that happens over time. I don't know if we have to keep replacing the floor for it to work properly. Or if once we place down the floor, it just generates constant mana for us. Either way, I might have to look that up because that sounds really good and also really, really confusing at the same time. But that should be a mid to late game mana generating flower that we may or may not actually need. Now, someone did let me know a while back of items and stuff that we may want to craft in Batania in Vault Hunters here. I don't remember the person and I don't remember what items they told me to look into. So my bad. I will have to go back and look at that and potentially see what else we want to make in this. But right now, we're just going to hold off until we get the remaining diamonds to craft the Terra Shatterer. And maybe you guys can let me know some other things that we may or may not want to craft as well here now that we are into the the next stage of Batania here with the Alvin Portal or Alfine Portal.
Alrighty, so I wanted to craft the Terra Shatterer today, but we were nine diamonds short, so I had to run some vaults. I was really hoping we only had to run one, maybe two at most, but we had to run all four before we had enough of the diamonds to do this. So let's quickly go through all of these. I want to craft the Terra Shatterer before we wrap up today, so I'm going to take the vault diamonds, I'm going to open up the Relic Boosters, and that's about it. We got a bunch of statues and, and vendors again as well. But moving on over to vault number two here, we got some more vendors, some more statues, we got another key piece fragment, so that's great. That's the start of our second key when we get around to running those eventually let's take the vault diamonds the relic boosters we got one chest piece which i'm not going to roll right now we are actually yeah i guess i will roll that for right now we did not get very much vault or because i was literally just running through the vaults and breaking as many chests as quickly as possible because I, I i wanted vault diamonds and that's the the quickest way i know of getting them so moving on over to vault number three here we have a bunch of vendors we got a bunch of these statues yet again we got four vault diamonds for that one we got a little bit of vault or we got 44 of the relic booster packs we got a helmet and two idols and moving on over to the final vault of the day here we also got a bunch more statues and vendors i believe we are very close to making another omega already Maybe not quite there, but we are very, very close to it. This vault paid out pretty well. We got nine vault diamonds and 27 of the relic boosters. So we have 19 vault diamonds from these four vaults today, which was pretty great. The third vault almost ended in a reset or a loss of the loot because I didn't realize how far I was away from it. We also had slowed and... We got very, very close. I think it was like six or seven seconds before we failed that vault. But let me open all of these and roll everything and see if we get anything useful. All right, so out of all of the relic boosters, we got one mystery box. And out of the armor here, we got one helmet that is going to be our new helmet, I believe. It has better stats than the one we have on right now, and the one that we wear is just about broken. So I'm gonna enchant this one up and get it squared away before we run some more vaults. We're probably gonna rock the old helmet still for another vault or two until that one breaks or gets a little lower on durability, and then we will swap on over to this one. All right, so we're going to need at least 40 mana diamonds just for the Terra Shatterer alone. So let me get all those squared away. So that's going to be the Terra Shatterer, and then we're also gonna need two more of the ingots to make the the terra still mana band and then we're also going to be making a mirror of mana or, or a mana mirror or something like that i forget what it's called all right so it is indeed called a mana mirror we're going to need one of those as well because once we get into the terra shatter we're going to be tearing through mana like crazy so with that we should be able to link it to the mana pools and then have mana wherever we are in the world i hope it works in vault because if it doesn't then that's pretty pointless but we should be good let me craft together all of the terra still that we need we have all of the vault diamonds all of the other stuff as well i do believe i will see here shortly if we're missing anything very quickly but let me gather up all of this it should take a minute doing all that and i'll be right back with you guys all right the only thing we are short on is the scrap so hopefully this doesn't have to be the randomly selected stuff and it could be rolled already i'm not too sure on that but that's all the vault gear we need to smelt down and oh it has to be that no 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 don't be that okay never mind we needed to put them into blast furnaces that was my bad but once these are done being smelted we'll have exactly enough of the vault scrap to turn into the vault right ingots that we need and then i will craft together all of the terra still here okay so i'm actually going to craft the mirror and the upgraded mana rink in between episodes at some point our mana generation is completely garbage this took me about an hour and a half two hours it's it's been a minute since the last cut here but we now have enough terra still to craft this thing so let's do that now it's gonna come in handy but it's not gonna be useful to us for a little while here because we really need to deal with our mana generation right now uh, i don't know how much this is actually going to be pulling while we are using it so this may be able to keep up with it, or it may not be able to keep up with it. But we definitely need some better source of coal coming in. I need to go AFK at the Wither Farm because I've blown through pretty much all of my coal. This is all that I have left. I have a little bit left in the chest as well, trying to generate mana. So this is very slow, but it's doing the job that we need it to do. So it is what it is, but we now have this thing crafted, and how do we activate it? I forget exactly. Let me look that up real quick. Oh, we need to put mana in it. Okay, so I'm not going to drain this pool completely. Did I even get it in the pool? I did not. Okay, let me do that again. We should drain a little bit of mana in it, but I don't want to empty the pool because then I have to activate it again for the portal. But now we have a little bit of mana in there. The top of the thing is an XP bar, so we can get it up to S class, I believe. So right now we're on C, moving on over to B. And if we right click on it, 
we get a little different icon on the hotbar there and the thing changes in our hand as well. So does this not pull the mana from our ring? Because I have the ring on there. I guess you just needed a little bit on it to activate the, the thing here. Let me jump on over to our mine real quick. So our mana ring is full and we should be able to vein mine with this as well. I don't know if it's going to keep the charge. It doesn't look like it moved any. And the ring definitely used a little bit of mana. Okay, so if we do this a couple more times here, we can see just how badly this is going to not work for us. So actually, no, that wasn't too bad. It's going to tear through it, though, when we are in a mine room, but it didn't use that much. It is, it is using it, though, and it's not changing here. Okay, so we have to use mana to rank it up, and then we also have to keep mana on us in order to use it as an activated thing. So it's doing a 3x3 three three right now, and then if we do that, it's just doing a normal vein mine, and if we reactivate it and not hold vein mine, we're doing a 3x1 little column. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But anyways, that is going to be it for today's episode, so I hope you enjoyed as always, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching!